Mr. Gan Kim Yong, Minister for Health, Mr. Peter Sia, Chairman of Singh Health, Professor Pai V. Ng, Group CEO of Singh Health, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Very happy to be here at last to launch the SGH Campus Master Plan. We've waited for this a long time. SGH was the first hospital in Singapore, as you've heard from Professor Ng. It came here in 1882, but really the history goes back even longer to 1821, when it was a medical facility in a wooden shed by the Singapore River. But eventually it moved here after several shifts on a hill near the Sepoy Lines. Those of you who are not quite old enough or have forgotten your school history, Sepoys were Indian soldiers in the British Raj. And the Sepoy Lines was the Sepoy Camp, which was located near here. So there used to be a road here called Sepoy Lines. And this was the Sepoy's camp or cantonment, hence Cantonment Road. And that's the history lesson. <laughs> and that's why to this day, many older Singaporeans still call this place Sepai Po, which is the Hokkien rendering of Sepoy Lines. This was also where Singapore's first medical school, the King Edward VII College of Medicine, was established back in 1905. Since then, the medical school has gone to NUS's Kent Ridge campus and is now the Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine. But many of the students still come here and train here. And I'm glad that after this, we will be hearing some of them from the Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine performing for us. But here, we have now another medical school, the Duke NUS Medical School. So Utram Campus continues to play a major role in medical education. As the oldest hospital, SGH has a special place in many Singaporeans' hearts. Often it's the first hospital which comes to mind when people think of our healthcare system. And it's the first one which people instinctively want to go to when they need treatment. Although we are trying very hard to educate people into the importance of right citing medical care and how it's best that they be treated at the place that best suits their needs, whether it's a regional hospital, whether it's a community hospital, whether it's an outpatient clinic, or possibly resting at home. But over the years, we've developed and expanded SGH. In the old days, we had open wards, we had long corridors linking up different parts of hospitals, and patients found their way around by following colored lines painted on the ground along the corridors. Some of you may remember that. So you tell a patient, follow the red line, you go to orthopedic, the blue line, you go to surgery, whatever. Because many of the patients were illiterate, and that was the simplest way to get them around. And hopefully, if you followed the line conscientiously, you would go to the right place. <laughs> Lee Yong Kiat explained this to me once. He said, the only trouble is you're looking down and following the line, and if you're not careful, you'll bump into something. Today, you look down at your iPhone as you walk along following the app, <laughs> and you have the same problem. But today, the campus has far better facilities and capabilities. We have 40 clinical specialties, we have national centers for cancer, dental, eye, heart, neuroscience. It's a major provider of care, receiving patients from all over Singapore. The layout of the campus today basically reflects a major redevelopment started in the 70s and completed in 1981. I remember when Mr. Lee Kuan Yew opened it, we were all very impressed by the new facilities and buildings. It was a quantum change from what the old hospital used to be. And we've continued since then to improve and upgrade it, building some new buildings, repurposing others. But we have not done a comprehensive replanning and renewal of the campus, though we've been thinking about it for some time. Therefore, it's timely for us now to launch this master plan and refresh the campus. 1981 is now 35 years ago. 
for those of us who are not so young, we still think of this as the new SGH because our mental image of the old SGH was the corridors and the open wards. But 35 years is a very long time in medicine. The medicine has advanced enormously. The practice of healthcare has changed. Our society is more developed and our population is much older. So we are launching this master plan now. But this master plan is going to be a long time before it's going to be completed. I was going to say that it'll take 15 years, 2030 by the time it's done, but Ivy has just said 20 years. So it's going to be two decades of hard work. And it's a very difficult job because we have to do a musical chairs exercise. This is a very busy hospital which has to be kept running. And we've got to shift buildings and roads and patients around while maintaining service standards and not dropping the ball. By the time this master plan is complete, 2030, 2035, 50 years will have passed since the 1981 redevelopment. So it's not at all too early to fit out and to have a new campus fit to serve the new generation of Singaporeans. The work has already begun. In fact, the first piece of it is this academia building where we are today. And a year and a half ago, we had the new heart center open. And we are now in the process of building the Utram Community Hospital. You can see it coming up, and it should be ready by 2020. So this master plan will transform SGH and help us to serve patients better. And it will do so in three ways. First, by delivering better care. Secondly, by developing stronger healthcare capabilities. Thirdly, by making it easier for patients to get around, get around the campus physically. First of all, better care. We will triple the total space for patient care and target the areas where we expect the most demand. For example, cancer is one of those illnesses that many of us, even most of us, will get, and sometimes more than once in our lifetimes. With better cancer care, <clears throat> patients live longer. It can become a chronic disease, but then the patients will need continuing treatment and follow up, and so the caseload goes up. Therefore, we are building a new National Cancer Center. It will be the tallest building on the campus, more than 20 stories tall, and it will meet these new needs. We are building a new A&E department, moving it to a new building to increase its capacity, as it is one of the busiest departments in the hospital. We are building a new SGH elective care center to add more operating theaters, specialist outpatient clinics, and acute beds. And the elective care center will also house the new national dental center. So through the new buildings, we will bring together different aspects of care into a single complex, as Ivy said, patient-centric and focused on their needs across disciplines. For example, if you have diabetes, there are many different parts of you which need to, be get, which need to get checked. Your eyes, your limbs, your blood pressure, your kidney function, and each bit of you belongs to a different specialty. But you're just one patient, so rather than the patient going to many different places, we'll bring all the specialties together and design the buildings and operations of the hospitals to be patient-centric and take care of the patient in one place as far as possible. And this new campus will enable us to do much more of that. Secondly, the new master plan will develop stronger capabilities, integrating medical care, research, and education so that we can better understand diseases that affect Singaporeans and find new and more effective and affordable ways to prevent and diagnose diseases and treat the patients. There will be a new research park in the campus that builds on the existing strengths of Sing Health and of Duke NUS Medical School by collaborating with industry partners. Altogether, this campus will meet 40% of our healthcare education needs in Singapore with more teaching and training facilities, and it will focus on integrated training 
training doctors, nurses, allied health professionals, the hospital staff together. Because it's the whole team working together which delivers the first-class medical care which our patients expect. Thirdly, the master plan will make it easier for patients, caregivers, visitors and staff to get around. We are bringing the facilities closer to the public transport links and making it easier for patients and visitors to get, to get around the campus. The campus covers today 43 hectares. So if you take the MRT and you want to come to SGH, you have to drop off at the Utram Park MRT station. Then either you've got to walk uphill for quite some distance or wait for the shuttle bus. And getting around the campus can be confusing and tiring as you navigate from building to building, particularly for the elderly. Actually, even to me, most of the corridors look the same. <laughs> so we'll make this a bit better. We'll move the patient, high patient volume services closer to the MRT station. We'll link up the hospital with the station, and you can get off the MRT and take an easy walk to the place of care. We'll also link together the different care facilities to make getting to different clinics and wards safer and more convenient and redesign the roads so that ambulances and patients have faster access to A&E. This master plan represents what we see as the future of healthcare in Singapore. It combines the best in facilities and technology, puts patients at the centre of things. It's integrated with a larger network of community hospitals, primary care and home care. It enables our healthcare system to continue to take care of Singaporeans well and ensures that all of us have access to high quality, affordable healthcare. At the same time, while we upgrade, we'll, where possible, also preserve or repurpose some of our old buildings to remind us of our heritage, of our history. So, Bowyer Block with a clock tower is the only block which remains going back to 1926, nearly 100 years. Now it houses the SGH Museum as well as outpatient services and reminds us how we've built and upgraded SGH over the years to serve Singaporeans and commemorates those who have given their lives and careers to public health care, like Dr. John Bowyer in particular. We also have the Mystery Wing, donated by Navroji Mystery, who had a passion for helping the poor. And the wing used to house two pediatric wards, pediatric wards for sick children. Later, it had the heart center. Now it's become the home to the new diabetes and metabolism center. And it reminds us of how we can help the vulnerable and needy among us through our own efforts. These are values that we must preserve and pass on even as we upgrade and transform the buildings that house it, the institution, because that's how we can take care of one another well. So I'd like to thank MOH, Singh Health, SGH, and all the healthcare partners for working hard on this master plan and making it possible for us today to launch it. And I'd like to wish all our healthcare professionals, whether here or around the campus, or elsewhere in our ecosystem. Happy New Year, Shanti Jenkang, Wan Shi Rui.